All right, I wanted to run through the solution to the 2003 AP exam problem that I gave you just to, um, well, review a little bit of kinematics and just talk a little bit about energy. So, the speed of the box at time t equals zero, well, we're given the position as a function of time is 0.5t cubed plus 2t, and we're told x is in meters and t is in seconds. So if we want to get any kind of speed or velocity, let's start by taking the derivative, and that's going to give us 1.5t squared plus 2. So the speed of the box at time equals 0 is going to be 1.5 times um, 0 plus 2, which is going to give me 2 meters per second. Awesome. Now for part b, we want to determine the kinetic energy as a function of time. So I know the speed is 1.5t squared plus 2. So I have that the mass of the box is 100 kilograms. So the kinetic energy as a function of time is simply going to be the formula 1 half mv squared, or in this case x dot. So that's going to give me 50, because 1 half times 100 is 50, times 1.5t squared plus 2 quantity squared. And then for C, the net force, well, we know that um, the sum of the forces is the mass times acceleration. This, when we add up all the forces, we get the net force, and that's completely equivalent to m times a. So rather than trying to figure out any kind of force on the box, let's get the acceleration by taking a derivative and multiply it by the mass. So we have that the velocity, or the speed, is 1.5t squared plus 2. So the acceleration, which is the derivative, is going to be 3.0t. So the net force acting on the box is a function of time. F is m times a, F net, and that's going to be equal to 100 times 3.0 times t, which is 300t. Um, and that's actually not part c. That's, um, let's see if I can fix this. Um, so this is part 1. This is part 2 of part b. And then for 3, we want the power delivered to the box. And I tell you here, that's actually going to be the time derivative of the kinetic energy. So if we have here um, that the kinetic energy is 50 times 1.5t squared plus 2, let's take a derivative. So that's going to be, oh, and that needs to be squared. That's going to be 50 times, we're going to use chain rule, 2 times 1.5t squared plus 2 to the 1 power. And um, if you think of this as the cradle inside the little baby, we don't want to forget the baby. Let's take the derivative of the baby inside. So that's going to be 3.0 times t. And I'm actually okay with you leaving it like that um, if you want. I suppose if you want to clean it up, you could write this as 100 um, times 1.5t squared plus 2 times 3.0t, but that would be about it. Now, we want the work or the work done on the box between the interval 0 to 2 seconds. Um, so let's take a look at that. So that was supposed to say solution. How naughty. Let's change that. Now um, the work done, so that is going to be the Ke at 2 seconds minus the Ke at 0 seconds, which is the formula we're going to come up with in, which is the formula we came up with in the, um, in the previous video. Um, that was part of your homework. So, um, let's look at the kinetic energy formula. Again, we have this, 50. times 1.5t squared plus 2, quantity squared is the kinetic energy. So we need the kinetic energy at 2 minus the kinetic energy at 0, which is going to be 50 times 1.5 times 4 plus 2, quantity squared, minus 50 times, well, 2, quantity squared. So that's going to give me 50 times 6 plus 2 is 8 squared, minus 50 times um, 2 squared, which is 4. So that's going to be 50 times 60. I'm getting 3,000 joules of energy. You might want to double check and make sure that I did my math correctly. Um, so that's that for C. Now for D, 
we want to indicate whether the work would be greater or less than the answer in part B. So the work done on the box by the student. Well, we know the net force is MA. And let's be really careful here. We know the net force is MA. We know there's a net change in kinetic energy. So let's be clear, this is the total work done on the box. And we are told that we are on a rough surface whoops, in the problem. So rough surface. What that tells me is the student does positive work to try to speed it up, Friction does negative work to slow it down. So what that means is in order to speed this box up from 0 to 2 meters per second, the student has to be doing more work than the friction. Okay, actually let me write that a little bit differently. I will say the work done by the student is greater than the work done by the friction, given the fact that the student's doing work to speed it up and friction's doing work to slow it down, yet the box speeds up. That means the friction, the, the, the student is doing work to overpower the work done by friction. And therefore, um, the student is doing, the, the net work is 3,000 joules, so the student is doing, say, 5,000 joules worth of work. I'm just making that number up. And then the, the friction would be doing 2,000 joules to give you 3,000. So the idea being the student has to do more work in order to speed the box up. So that's it for um, 2003 problem. And in the last video, we will take a look at the air resistance problem that I assigned for homework. I strongly suggest you study this for tomorrow's quiz.